I'm Bill Hemmer, and this is the Fox News Rundown. Wednesday, October 3rd, 2018. And Lisa Brady. She's mostly avoided the spotlight. But now, First Lady Melania Trump is on her first solo trip overseas, trying to spread some goodwill. No one in Africa is saying that this trip is a waste of time or just a PR gesture. This is, as she put it, a meaningful visit. She is trying to make a difference. I'm Dave Anthony. More Americans have more student loan debt. It now totals one and a half trillion dollars. It's the fastest growing debt by far because people are not saving enough getting into college and therefore the kids are maxing out on however much they can borrow. The parents are maxing out on whatever they can borrow. And I'm Howard Kurtz. I've got the final word on the Fox News Rundown. First Lady Melania Trump spending her second day in Africa after arriving Tuesday in Ghana. Her first solo foreign trip from the White House. I just saw on television her walking out of the plane. It was beautiful and saying hello to the kids. Uh, She is really doing a great job as first lady. She got a lot of negative publicity back in June, visiting a Texas detention center for immigrant children during the firestorm over family separations at the Mexican border. I'm here to learn about your facility, and I also like to ask you how I can help to these children to reunite with their families. Outreach overshadowed by a jacket she wore on and off the plane that said on the back, I really don't care. Do you? The president later tweeting it was a reference to the fake news media, which the first lady's spokeswoman never confirmed. This trip has raised some questions about the president's policies as well, with the administration proposing billions of dollars in budget cuts at the U.S. Agency for International Development, a federal agency that administers foreign aid and development assistance. Overall, though, not much media coverage in advance of the trip, which also takes the First Lady to Kenya, Malawi, and Egypt. They have made a lot of work into why Mrs. Trump should visit these four countries. Fox reporter Paul Tilsley is in Africa. The first consideration obviously is is security. There are some unstable countries on the African continent, so she's not going to them. Uh, the next consideration is what countries suit what Melania Trump is doing in terms of her project such as uh, Be Best, the project which is helping towards all aspects to do with children, with children's health, with children's literacy, etc. So they have identified in conjunction with USAID these four countries. The other aspect, which is a small aspect, is that Mrs. Trump has made it her request that she wants to have a little bit of time to do tourism. There's even some suggestion that she'll go on a safari. I doubt that, but I do believe that she's going to be uh, visiting visiting elephants and some other wild animals in terms of conservation efforts while she's in Kenya. What kind of reception has she had so far after the first day of the trip? Well, her profile isn't that large on the continent. You know, the the profile of her predecessor, Michelle Obama, was, was much larger. And that was because, of course, Mr. Obama's African heritage. But uh, she's basically had um, a goodwill. You know, the, the Trump administration needs to have probably some, um, some goodwill surrounding this administration when it comes to Africa. There have been some controversial moments. Things haven't quite gone according to plan. And now here is an opportunity for the Trump administration to spend a week with the First Lady, with a major person, doing non-controversial work that is positive about America's, the U.S.'s relationship with Africa. What kind of coverage does it get in the media over there? Because in the States, so far anyway, there's been very little coverage of the trip. The coverage so far is quite localized. The rest of the continent hasn't yet really woken up to the fact that the First Lady is here. Now, a major part of that is that the White House for security concerns has not released her schedule. All we know is that she will be going to particular countries on particular days. So without being able to say exactly where she's going, it's very difficult for the media to help towards stirring up any excitement. Was there a lot of coverage over there about 
cuts to the U.S. AID program? Did that get a lot of attention? It has in the highbrow press, but in the mainstream media, it, it hasn't. And it has, in fact, it's the U.S. press that I've been reading up that have been talking about that, that there appears to be a little bit of a contradiction between her husband's position on uh, declaring the intent to cut back on USAID and her visiting USAID locations uh, on the continent. And in fact, the entire trip has been pretty much worked out with the assistance of USAID. Um, so she's giving off extremely positive vibes about uh, the US's uh, desire to support USAID. And um, there could be uh, I don't want to say there are mixed messages, but some circles are suggesting that there are indeed mixed messages about what's going on regarding the future of USAID. What about for Africa? What would Africa hope to get out of the First Lady's trip, if anything? Well, perhaps an example of that was one guy that was talked to just a, a man in the street in Cairo in Egypt. And he says, well, he's just another person, another high, you know, a high ranking person visiting this country. I, it's difficult to see what I'm going to get out of this trip. I think what it does, though, from a positive point of view, is it does the work that she's doing is good work, particularly in, in relation to neonatal and maternal care and uh, children's education. And it does throw the highlight on those positive um, moves that are being made on the continent. That's what her Be Best agency is all about, her charity. And I think one can say there'll be a lot of positive after effects of her visit in that respect. Andrew Oak is an author and historian of American First Ladies, and he says Melania Trump isn't the first to stay out of the limelight. She's not a traditional modern day First Lady. There were so many first ladies that did not have a public persona, a public opinions. They didn't do public events. And many other family members, nieces, daughters, uh, uh, sisters, would take over for those first ladies in those instances. But in modern times, Melania Trump is a bit unusual, especially with the technology that's available now, television, radio, social media, the Internet. So our past handful of first ladies have been much more active. But you don't have to go too far back to the Nixon administration to see a first lady that wasn't all about the pomp and circumstance. She knew how to host us a party. She knew how to be a perfect political partner for her husband. But she wasn't always in that limelight or looking for that credit or being a part of the pop culture like a lot of our modern first ladies do or have. So Melania Trump is unusual in the sense that the past, uh, you know, five plus years or so, we're used to seeing these first ladies in every aspect of life. But if you go over the course of history, she's not that unusual in that aspect at all. And I'm sure the White House would be quick to argue that you can be just as effective on some levels working behind the scenes out of the spotlight. Well, you can. And I even challenge this, that Melania Trump is out there and active when she wants to be. And that's, to me, means that it, it can mean a little bit more. She's not out there because she feels like she has to be. She's out there when she is out there because she wants to be. Um, you know, these women are not paid and they are not elected. There's not a First Ladies 101 in college that you can take. So a First Lady really doesn't have to do anything. And if she doesn't care about her poll ratings or her public opinion, then she really has to do even even less. But when you do get out there and you have this this attitude that Melania Trump seems to have, that she does get out there only when she really wants to and she really cares about something, to me, that makes it a little more genuine than just going through the motions. And you see this. You see this physically with her. When she's doing something with children or she's doing something about public health and safety or drug addiction, she's holding her husband's hand and she's smiling and she's in a better mood because she's really behind that subject. But when she's doing some of the duties that may not be as appealing to her because she's not a very 
public person, which is also a surprise to a lot of people, myself included, given that she was a supermodel and on the catwalk and, and, and at fashion shows and magazine covers and all that. But keep in mind, that did not include public speaking. And there's a lot of people that don't like public speaking. And a lot of first ladies have shunned away from that. It's a very modern element or aspect to the role of first lady to be this speech giver and television interviewer and, and, and out in the limelight and in front of the cameras. And some first ladies gravitate towards it, like a Michelle Obama or Laura Bush, as she still does so many different uh, events. And Hillary Clinton, uh, Lady Bird Johnson, Jacqueline Kennedy, uh, Betty Ford, you know, you can go down the list. Uh, Nancy Reagan, if I didn't say that, Barbara Bush. Um, but there's not as many first ladies in modern times that are like S. Truman or Pat Nixon that really want to stay behind. And like you said, you can get as much done, just not as many people know about it. And we're a society now that everyone has to know everything everyone's doing at every instance of the day. And that rolls over into into the first lady's world. And of course, for Melania Trump, public speaking, that much more of a challenge with English not being you know, her first language. But when she does step into the spotlight, it seems like one of two things happens. Either there's not as much coverage of it as you might expect, like leading into this trip to Africa, or mm-hmm. or she faces some public criticism, like when she rolled out the Be Best initiative. This is a very distinct and unique to Michelle Obama and Melania Trump. These are the first social media first ladies. I mean, the first first ladies that are really in it when social media is at an all-time high. And that's a cruel world. Politics itself, the public and world stage, is a cruel world. And people get more divisive over the years, and women are associated with their husbands more so than they have been in the past, because we do seem to be this divided country uh, of people that either love or hate a president. And I think Laura Bush was the last first lady where there was a divisive president where people either really supported him or really didn't, uh, but it did not affect Laura Bush's likability and poll numbers and effectiveness. But with Michelle Obama and Melania and Trump, people have just been able to say unchecked, unregulated, uh, I don't even have to substantiate their claims on social media, and you can say horrible things about people. So, you know, she steps out in the public light, and like you say, she's not 100% comfortable with, with English in that she does have a heavy accent. It is not her, her native language, and she gets blasted a little bit for that. I think that happened in in different aspects to Michelle Obama and largely in part because of social media. Do you think she has a chance to win over the American public whether he wins over more people or not? I think she does and I think we started to see it last year around Christmas time, around the holidays. I think people were tired of, of Melania Trump being bashed when um, people started uh, saying bad things about her her holiday decorations. But I think with the causes she's chosen and the work that she does and the genuine efforts that she puts into her work with children and Be Best and and health and the anti-drug stuff and living a better life and the anti-cyberbullying, um, you know, I, I, I think that she will make her mark and, and history will treat her very kindly. Andrew Oak, author of Unusual for Their Time, On the Road with America's First Ladies. Thanks so much for joining us. Lisa, fantastic to be here with you. 